I once tried to pray the straightaway. Hi, I'm Katie Camerdiner, and I once tried to pray the straightaway. I'm bisexual, I'm butch or masculine, I'm a touch gender fluid, I'm definitely neuroqueer, and I use she, her pro pronouns with an occasional they cameo. But I'm also a Christian and have been so all my life. A Baptist one at that. See, the word queer can mean many things. It was once and still is a slur to many. I want to honor that, as I know many in this room have had that word hurled at them in malice. People in my lifetime in my social and academic circles have used the term queer to reclaim it to its roots of a little off, but a little different than normal. I ask you, grant me grace, as I tell you a different tale of the word queer, of why queer as a word best describes me and my way of moving through the world. See, living in two countries as a young child is a queer thing. As a missionary kid, I learned as I walked a different path, threading the needle through multiple cultures with an odd risk profile. As a child and a young teen, I learned having ADHD was a queer thing. Some at my small town church in Georgia were less than pleasant about it, but others took their commitment to Jesus seriously when he said to love everyone fiercely. Bisexuality in a gay church is a queer thing. When I was in high school, a beloved family member joined a church that claimed to really love everyone. All the gay Christians in Chattanooga, Tennessee went to this church. When I would visit, I heard sermons about the fullness of God's love and that God doesn't leave anyone behind and you weren't sinful for who you loved. And that was great. But people I loved told me bisexuals weren't real. It was a phase of whether you were figuring out if you were gay or straight. I was told my feelings weren't real, but at least I walked away knowing that God loved me and loved gay people, even though apparently I wasn't one of them. Turns out bisexuality was an awfully long phase for me, and a bit of a queer twist of what some may call the classical gay Christian experience, I prayed that God would take away my attraction to men. I wanted to be a lesbian. I'm butch, I'm masculine, I like power tools, I played rugby. Besides, I wasn't even sure I was real. Uh, great news, God knows better than me and said no. Instead, God sent me to a little corner of the internet that said bisexual folks are real and valid and loved. And then more importantly, sent me to a little corner of the Baptist world that said all of you are weird, weird loved and queerfully and wonderfully made. And not only that, I got to use power tools that summer in my little mission year. I moved to Austin in my 20s, being attracted to the slogan, Keep Austin Weird, and found a weird little corner of Baptists, and we like our coffee, like we like our coffee. Flavored, often a little fruity, definitely bold, and most definitely organic, handcrafted, and with a fun little story on the side of the package. <laughs> Throughout my time here, I have felt loved and validated, and I was loved and validated on my path to seminary as a bisexual woman. After my brain injury during seminary, God let me feel loved when my brain couldn't string sentences together sometimes at night due to migraines. Talk about neuroqueer, the term that now best describes me. I don't process information like a lot of people, but that doesn't matter because I don't love like many others either, so let's just lump it into a term called neuroqueer and be done with it. But later, after the brain fuzziness settled a bit, faith led me back to UBC in a time where we loudly proclaim that whether the school across the street says diversity and equity and inclusion matter or not, or why the legislature down the street tries to shut us all down, we say no, you are welcome here because we are at home with those who do not fit in. Jesus was like that. Jesus hung out with sex workers and tax collectors and all sorts of people we don't always like but they deserve love too, just like we do. Because it turns out Jesus was kind of a queer guy. It turns out being queer isn't such a bad thing. After all, it's who I am. And like everyone in this room, we are queerfully and wonderfully made. Amen.